Good morning, y'all. It's been a long time since I've been here, but I just wanted to come on because for a lot of us, we love the holidays, but for a lot of people, it's a, a depressing time of the year. And honestly, for me, it's like a void after you've had your holiday and then you have to take the decorations down and then you're like, what is there to look forward to? But I'm trying to change that mindset and it's a blessing just to be alive. So every day, I'm sorry, I'm grateful. I am. So I wanted to come on and I wanted to read the, our daily bread for today just because I just feel like this could help somebody. It says, Wednesday, November the 17th, <clears throat> Isaiah 43 and 4, excuse me, you are precious and honored in my sight. I love you. Accepted and approved. As a child, Tenney felt insecure. He sought approval from his father, but he never received it. It seemed that whatever he did, whether in school or at home, it was never good enough. Even when he entered adulthood, the insecurity remained. He continually wondered, am I good enough? Only when Tenny received Jesus as his savior did he find the security and approval he'd long yearned for. for. He learned that God, having created him, loved and cherished him as his son. Tenny finally could live with the confidence that he was truly valued and appreciated. In Isaiah 43, 1 through 4, God told his chosen people that, having formed them, he would use his power and love to redeem them. You are precious and honored in my sight, he proclaimed. He would act on their behalf because he loved them, that's verse 4. The value God places on those he loves doesn't come from anything we do but from the simple and powerful truth that he's chosen us to be his own. These words in Isaiah 43 not only gave Tenny great security, but also empowered him with the confidence to do his best for God in whatever task he was called to do. Today, he's a pastor who does all he can to encourage others with this life-given truth. We're accepted and approved in Jesus. May we confidently confidently live out this truth today how do you think god sees you what does john 1 and 12, 12 tell you about your relationship with him what comfort do you find in that knowledge heavenly father i know you love me accept me and cherish me thank you for adopting me as your child and loving me without conditions Today's scripture comes from Isaiah 43, 1 through 4. But now, this is what the Lord says. He who created you, Jacob, he who formed you, Israel, do not fear, for I have redeemed you. I have summoned you by name. You are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And when you pass through the rivers, they will not sweep over you. When you walk through the fire, you will not be burned. The flames will not set you ablaze. For I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. I give Egypt for your ransom, Cush and Seba in your stead. Since you are precious, and because I love you, I will give people in exchange for you, nations in exchange for your life. And the insight says, against the backdrop of an imminent, imminent Assyrian invasion, this is Isaiah 7, 18 through 25, 10, 5, and 6, and the future Babylonian destruction and exile, that's 39, 6, and 7, God reminded the people of Judah that as his people, they had a special relationship with him, that's 43 and 1. He also assured them of his love and protection through a self-revelation of who he is. That's verses 1 through 7. Because they are greatly loved by God, their creator and redeemer, verse 1, protector, verse 2, and savior, verse 3, they need not fear the invading Assyrians or the Babylonians, that's verses 4 through 5. In calling God the Holy One of Israel, verse 3, Isaiah's common designation for God, see 1 through 1 and 4, 10 and 20, 12 and 6, 30 and 12, 16 and 14. Isaiah extolled God's complete holiness. See 6 and 3. Though God's people remained unfaithful and unrepentant, 43, 22 and 20 through 24, God in his mercy had purpose to forgive them their sins. Verse 25. Although they be forgiven, they still be disciplined. 
through the Babylonian exile, 4 and 28. And so I just thought that this was so good because we have so many people um, that just don't feel worthy, don't, they don't feel loved, they don't feel appreciated. God loves you, he made you, he knows all the, I know everything about you. And I was going through yes, something yesterday and I kind of got upset and then I thought about it and um, we all have family experiences. But yea, through I walk through the valley of the shadow, I will feel no evil because God is with me. And we have to live on that assurance that he's always with us regardless of what we go through. And another thing is when you're going through hard times, remember the devil can't do anything without God's approval. So if you're going through the hard times, it's just going to make you a stronger, better person. Sometimes you're just going through it to make you examine yourself. You understand? So when you're going through something, don't feel that you're not loved because you're going through it. It could be discipline. It could be growing. It, you know, it could be teaching you something to help you grow. So everything we go through is a learning experience. It's a learning experience. And so with that, I'm going to get off here. I got to get ready to work this morning. But I also want to come back and talk about the Travis Scott situation and give you my my take on it. And, um, so I'll be back.